I'm Mark Seipter. And I'm Linda Zeiss Palmer. And this is Arcane Mark. Pathfinder 2nd Edition Oracle Class from the Advanced Player's Guide. That's right. This is our second of four Advanced Player's Guide classes. It's a Divine Spellcaster. Let's see what the uh, Advanced Player's Guide says about Oracle in the introduction to start us off in talking about Oracle. Your conduit to divine power eschews the traditional channels of prayer and servitude. You instead glean divine truths that extend beyond any single deity. You understand the great mysteries of the universe embodied in overarching concepts that transcend good and evil or chaos and law, whether because you perceive the common ground across multiple deities or circumvent their power entirely. You explore one of these mysteries and draw upon its power to cast miraculous spells, but the power comes with a terrible price, a curse that grows stronger the more you draw upon it. Your abilities are a double-edged sword which you might uphold as an instrument of the divine or view as a curse from the gods. So, as an oracle, your key ability is charisma. Got eight. It's the force of personality. It, yep. It's not just that the, the, the gods are blessing you directly. You're, You're having, having, to, having hold to, to hold it all, hold together. It all together. And use yep. your force of personality to manage it, yes. You got eight hit points uh, as your base number of hit points. And uh, you are trained in perception. As well uh, as fortitude and reflex, expert in will, trained in religion, and some skill, a skill or skills determined by your mystery, and three more. Trained in simple weapons and unarmed attacks, light armor and unarmored defense, divine spell attack rolls, and divine spell DCs. You might not be spending all the time studying dogma that clerics do, but you sure gotta take some time to understand divine mysteries to Otherwise, figure out what's going on with you. You don't even know like what's going on. Yeah. So what is it like to roleplay the Oracle? According to the Advanced Player's Guide, during combat encounters, you draw upon your mystery to empower yourself, balancing miraculous effects with the increasing severity of your curse as conflicting divine demands overtax your physical body. You cast spells to aid your allies and devastate your foes, or depending on your mystery, you might wade into battle yourself. During social encounters, you rely upon the insights drawn from your mystery. You might leverage your curse to intimidate people or hide its effects to better blend in. While exploring, you recenter yourself to bring the terrible metaphysical conflict causing your curse back under control so you can draw upon your mystery's power again later. You remain aware of supernatural forces acting around you, perhaps peeking into the future to gain insights. In downtime, you might seek to learn more about your mystery and the divine wellsprings that fuel your power. Associated with, uh, associating with others interested in the subject of your mystery can make it easier to live with your curse. You could associate with an organized religion or even start your own faithful following devoted to your mystery. You might view your oracular powers as a blessing, a curse, or both. You might push yourself to the limits of what you can withstand to work great acts of magic. You might rely on magic items to provide a pool of safer and more reliable magic. Others probably don't realize your spellcasting draws upon divine power and instead believe you command stranger and possibly evil powers. They probably assume you perform some terrible transgression to become cursed by the gods, and they probably admire your determination and the sacrifices you make to perform wondrous acts. So that's your basic starting point in terms of proficiency and in terms of uh, role playing. So um, what else do you have? Well, you've got divine spells, of course, and you are a spontaneous caster, which means you have a spell repertoire. It works pretty similar to an oracle. Uh, well, it is an oracle. Yeah, to a sorcerer. Very, very similar. It works pretty similar to a sorcerer. You can also you can also heighten up spells. Yep. Uh, but you need signature spells if you want to get just automatically be able to heighten the spell at all. Again, uh, similar to the sorcerer. Yeah, you get cantrips. You've got your mystery. This is a big deal. Uh, we, we can get into your mysteries once we finish everything except the feats because each one is a huge difference that could do things like changing your base hit points so that that eight hit points is not correct or proficiencies or uh, all sorts of other things. And they give you and they give you like special spells and all kinds of stuff. That's going yep. On, for yep. Sure. Um, you get revelation spells. So interestingly, you start with a focus pool of two focus points, not one, and you. Not only that, you have revelation spells, which are your focus spells, but they have the curse bound trait, which means they increase the severity of your oracular curse whenever you cast them. And if you don't have an oracular curse, you can't cast them. Mm -hmm. 
So your oracular curse depends on your mystery, and they always follow a progression. You, The first time you cast one during the day, you get a mild curse. Then you get a moderate, and then a severe. But when you refocus, it goes back to mild. Also, it's possible that you can't accept a severe curse or, or later an extreme curse, in which case you actually uh, kind of overcharge your curse entirely and lose the ability to use some of your revelation abilities until the next day. But as you get to be a higher level oracle, you're able to you're able to delve deeper and deeper into the curse, gaining greater power at the cost of greater peril. That's right. Uh, so you can't get around the curse by any means, and uh, you can't remove it either. So that's what you get at level one. It's actually, in addition to some of the stuff that's in the mystery, it's going to be quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you move up, you get abilities and features that are kind of similar to the other spellcasting classes in that class you're going to class feats, skill, skill feats, feats, general, general feats. feats. All skill those, increases, all, all the, the kind of stuff. Everybody you... gets those yeah, yeah. ability boosts, ancestry feats. You get expert spellcaster when the other spellcasters do. Uh, you do pick up the ability resolve, which you're going to get at level 7, which is pretty good for a resolve. And you get, will pick up greater resolve at level 17, which not every spellcaster does. Uh, that will be like evasion for will saves. Uh, magical Fortitude at level 9 will give you Expert Fortitude because your body has to be able to handle the power of the curse. You'll get Lightning Reflexes at 13 and Alertness at 11, and that'll round out your Expert Proficiency. Level 11 is also when you learn how to withstand the Major Curse instead of just completely fizzling out your Revelations powers. And you get your focus pool to go all the way up to three if it hadn't been already. And you automatically get back two focus points when you refocus, which most classes have to spend a precious feat to do. You automatically do it. Mm -hmm. You get weapon expertise and armor expertise at the same time as other classes that are spellcasters. Weapon specialization as well. Master spellcasting. And then extreme curse at level 17. Like Linda said, you eventually can withstand... Your extreme curse, that is the same for all oracles. Yes. It's, there's not a fourth one for each mystery. Doom. Doomed too, but once every ten minutes you can re-roll a failed attack roll skill check or perception check or saving throw. Uh, so you're kind of doomed, but you kind of have ways to try to get away from your doom. Uh, mm. Doom. <laughs> and you, when you spend at least three focus points, you recover three focus points instead of one, which is, again, usually requires, like, a level 18 feet to get it, and you automatically get it. Mm -hmm. And then Legendary Spellcaster and Oracular Clarity, which is Oracle's version of the gaining 10th level spell ability that all of the sort of full spellcasters get at level 19. So like we said before, a lot of what makes an Oracle is tied up in these mysteries and their curses. Yes. So I think that we really need to look at the mysteries here because we're going to find out way more from that. A lot of everything else that we said other than that a beginning stuff mm -hmm. was just what is in there for a lot of other spellcasters. Yes. So, okay, mysteries give you a special benefit that you just automatically get. A trained skill, and some mysteries, a few, give you more than one. A cantrip, a cantrip that you automatically add to your spell repertoire. Yep. Some uh, a, a revelation spell, which you can get more by taking feats. Yep. And there are there's connected domains that are so called related domains. So cleric domains associated with your mystery, and you can select an initial domain spell from one of those domains, which That's you can, right. which is also added to your uh, your revelation spell list, which have gets that curse, curse bound trait, trait like all of your other revelation spells. That's right. Linda's playing an Oracle right now I in one am. of our games. She's playing an Oracle of Life, so she's going to be the expert on that one. <laughs> so let's start with Ancestor's Oracle, which is uh, kind of a, it's very similar to an Oracle that Linda played in Pathfinder 1st Edition. Yes. Although that happened to be a battle Oracle that had a very ancestors -y theme before the Ancestor's Mystery was out. But the Ancestor's Oracle, there are voices of, of all of your ancestors from cross generations are kind of speaking out to you and there's a lot of them and they have very different opinions on what you should be doing yes so the good news is you get extra ancestry feed uh and then a second extra ancestry feed at level 11 because you're just like really attuned with your ancestors 
you're trained in society, you get guidance, and you've got some ancestor-related revelation spells. Ancestral touch, ancestral defense, and ancestral form. Yes, ancestral touch is you kind of touch something, and um, they can see that there's a bunch of ancestors around there, which deals them mental damage and possibly freaks them out. I, I mean, I imagine the Oracle doing that, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, there's all these ancestors, and the Oracle's like, yeah, that's just my life, deal with it. <laughs> yep. And ancestral defense is a reaction on a will save that what you're about to attempt where you roll twice and take the better result. And it can change your ancestor, which uh, we'll get into in a moment. Uh, and then ancestral form makes you kind of invisible and only partially corporeal. And you gain a fly speed and uh, are much harder to hurt by certain things that won't hurt in corporeal creatures as much. You can float through tiny gaps. Yes. Just like those ancestral spirits that are yes. following you around. So those are your three things, and uh, let's see. I keep clicking on the links in Archives of Nethys, but really what I should be doing is... Is uh, opening new tabs. Is opening new tabs, because now... It just froze it. It's not going back to the um, the initial page. But... Uh, so the, the curse here, though, is, is ancestral meddling. Yes, it's the curse of ancestral meddling where all of your ancestors are kind of backseat driving and they are they each have a completely different thing that they want you to do and they disagree with each other on what's the right call and so uh basically what happens is you randomly wind up with an ancestor that is either like the the hardcore okay let's fight it's time to go in and, and you know mix things up with strikes and and use our weapons and unarmed attacks or the ancestor who's like, okay, but spells, come on, you're an oracle. We use magic to to win this fight. And then the ancestor who like is like, but skills, skills are the greatest way to win. And so between those three ancestors, they are going to be kind of making their own decision about what you should be doing. And if you don't follow what they're asking you to do, they will give you some penalties but if you do follow what they're asking you to do they will make it easier for you to succeed so that's all off the top of my head but um uh, because it's still not loading the page back however i think i have the advanced players guide right here which mm -hmm. i do so i i have i've also successfully navigated to the oracle and now i will use that instead of uh instead of going from page to page so, um, here's what actually happens. Basically, you roll a d4 to figure out which ancestor is the prominent for each day. Um, they will guide you to use their pre uh, preferred type of action. When you try to use other types of action, you have a 15% chance that you, s you spend the actions, but you don't get any effect. So, you don't lose a spell if you're casting a spell. And if you're doing a really long action, it's long enough you can overcome the mentally and you don't need to try the flat check. Like, if it's a minute or longer. And whenever you roll initiative, at the end of each of your turns during the encounter, roll 1d4 and change your predominant ancestor appropriately. And once the encounter is over, you return to the influence of the ancestor you rolled first for the day. So that is basically So it's going to keep switching around. Yes, and you get to choose on a 4. So there's... If there's one of the three that you really, really want, then you get a 50% chance that that's the one that you have. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's the prefer preference is either strikes, perception, and skill checks, or cast a spell. And yeah, it switches around constantly. And um, if you do the wrong kind of thing, you have that 15% chance that it fails. But with the moderate curse, the chance that it fails goes up to 25% if you don't listen to the ancestor... But you also gain a moderate benefit. Plus one on strikes and plus two to damage if you are, have the ancestor who wants strikes. Plus one on skill and perception checks with the ancestor who wants skills. And non cantor spells without a duration gain extra damage and healing equal to the spells level if you have the casting ancestor. And if you get a major curse, then those benefits are all the greater. Then you have a 35% chance to lose the action if it's not the right one, but all the benefits go up. You get plus 6 to damage with, with the martial one. You get plus 2 to skill and perception with the skillful one, and you wind up healing uh, level plus 3 for the spell, uh, or dealing damage of level plus <laughs> 3 for the spellcasting one. So, yeah. Basically, you're good at the thing the ancestors want you to do, and you might fail because they are 
constantly being, wait, no, don't do a strike. You should be casting a spell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very distracting. Yes. All right. So what about Battle Oracle? Yes. So Battle Oracle. Battle Oracles are trained in medium and, and medium and heavy armor. Uh, and they eventually gain uh, light armor expertise and expert proficiency in armors, and they get to choose one. Well, everybody gets light armor expertise, yeah. but when they gain it, they get expertise in all the armors. Yes. And they they have what one weapon group of yeah, martial weapons? Yeah, it's connected to their mystery, and then they're training all martial weapons of that group. And when they would get simple expert uh, weapons, they get expert in all those weapons too right yeah also they become trained in advanced weapons in they're trained group. in athletics uh they get shield cantrip which makes a lot of sense yep and they also get uh, three oracle spells which i will try to look up here but if we don't get them we can move on to the next one Mm -hmm. because I don't want to, like, switch back and forth among a bunch of different files. But, so yeah. their spells are Call to Arms, which is a reaction on initiative, which gives a bunch of bonuses on initiative and temporary hit points to your allies, uh, which is pretty nice. You've got Battlefield Persistence, where it's a reaction when you're trying to uh, attempt a saving throw, which gives you a plus two and makes it really hard for so enemies to incapacitate yeah, you. Yeah, you treat your level as too higher for the purposes of avoiding incapacitation. Effects. So unless you're on a on a, a, a parity level where spells are more dangerous or it's like a really, really big boss, you're mm -hmm. very unlikely to be incapacitated. And then Heroic Feat, where you spend three actions to gain a... Common fighter feat from the Corporal Booger Advanced Player's Guide that uses two, uh, or, or two, or two, two actions, or three actions. Yeah, two, two actions. If you if you cast it with two actions, then the granted action must be a single action. Yes. If you cast a spell using three actions, you can choose a feat that grants a two action activity. Yes. So you gain it and you use it, and yeah. it can't have a frequency. Because need... otherwise, you could do sorts of things like, oh yeah, oh, I'm going to get once these per once per day things uh, and do uh, all uh, of them. Uh, yeah. Uh. No. Um, and the associated domains are might and zeal. So what's the curse, though? The curse for battle is going to be um, when you're not bringing harm to your foes, your body languishes because it just shows so much adrenaline when you are fighting that it's just like, oh, my gosh, and you crash. So you take a minus two status penalty to AC and saving throws, but each time you make a strike, you suspend the penalties until the start of your next turn. So as long as you strike every turn, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. A moderate curse is... Uh, Making a strike only reduces the penalty to minus one rather than getting rid of it, but you get a plus two status bonus to weapon and unarmed damage rolls. And you gain and fast, fast healing. healing. Whenever you're in a non-trivial combat encounter. That's handy. You can't just fight a bag of rats, but as long as you're fighting like a legit enemy. The major curse gives you fast healing that is equal to your level, so that's double as much. And the damage bonus is plus six. Uh, and you gain a plus one status bonus to weapon and unarmed attack rolls, but you are stupefied too. So your spells are not doing as great at that yes. point in time. But sure, you're a but battle you're, Yeah, you're smacking really hard at that point. All right, what about bones? Yes. So bones oracles are connected to death and especially undeath. And uh, kind of a little bit of both. It doesn't necessarily have to be completely undeath, but it does uh, potentially give you negative healing. Yes. So, therefore... You can choose. You can be like, yeah, I'd rather have negative healing. Yes. Each day you could choose to gain negative healing, so you have at least some amount of undeath in there, because yeah. that's not normal for regular And death. if you already have negative healing, then it's... Then it's... Uh, the DC of your recovery checks is a little easier. Yes. It does not give you the option to get positive healing yes, if you have negative th healing. That's not... That would not be in keeping with the theme. That's right. Uh, you're trained in medicine. You get chill touch cantrip. And your red domains are death and undeath. The three spells are soul siphon. New tab. Which is going to uh, deal negative damage and also potentially drain um, the enemy while also giving you temporary hit points. And so that's like pretty handy. There's, there's very few first level f one action focus spells that can do the drained condition. And soul yes. siphon is basically the only one that I can think of. Uh, then there's Armor of Bones, which 
puts up bones that give you protection against a bunch of types of damage. Cold that electricity, skeletons fire are, piercing, and slashing. That yeah. skeletons are protected against. And then there's also claim undead, where you basically take control of an undead and try to make it follow your orders. And that's that's sort of how it goes. So it, it can be stunned, it can become controlled and follow your orders, and uh, otherwise, uh, on a failure, it can make another save each turn to try to remove the effect, but on a critical failure, it receives a new save only if you give it another order against its nature. So, it's basically similar to Dominate as a, um, but it's only on Undead as a focus spell. <laughs> and no, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, for tax purposes. Claim Undead is not for tax purposes. That's right. It's not for tax purposes. Uh, so, uh, that is Bones, uh, except for what about Bones' curse? So. Bones. Bones, the curse of bones. It's actually the curse of living death. Yes. So your body sort of decays. Bones for truth, your skin, your flesh rots. You don't heal as much from non magical non magical effects. Uh, at the minor level, at the moderate level, the flesh rot continues and makes you drained. Yep. You can only remove when you refocus. Um, but you're resistant to poison, and it's way harder to disease or. Poison and death. Poison you. and death. It's you way and, harder. You get a plus four. And if you get a su success on one of those types of saves, you get a critical success instead. So yeah, yep. you're really protected against those. Um, at the major curse, you just become wounded one, and again, that can only be removed when you uh, when you when you refocus. Uh, but when you try to recover, you can choose to get an automatic success instead of rolling. And your critical failures against disease, poison, and death. If you still manage to critically fail with all those bonuses, you fail instead. So yep. You cannot. Pretty Just pretty pointing out, if if you're a Bones Oracle and you're planning on actually going to the Extreme Curse, you should probably get Die Hard because mm -hmm. w with Wounded 1 and Doomed 2, yes. you, if you don't have Die Hard, you automatically die at zero. So yes. it doesn't matter how good your recovery check is. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> um, still, pretty awesome. Let's move on to Cosmos. Phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. <laughs> so, yeah, their mystery benefit just gives you a massive amount of resistance to physical damage. There's really no source in the game that is quite as good at getting you physical damage resistance all the time as the Cosmos mm -hmm. mystery. You are trained in nature. You get the dancing lights cantrip. This is connected to the domains of sun and moon, and you gain revelation spells. Or darkness and moon. Darkness, yes, I... I just said sun, even though it was incorrect. Uh, Spray of Stars is the uh, initial revelation spell. Yes, Spray of Stars. It basically dazzles things. And, throw the, it, and damages yes, them. It does fire damage with these little tiny shooting stars in a cone. That's right. Then there's Interstellar Void. Which calls upon the frigid depths of space to chill and fatigue your opponents. Yep. So thematically here, this could be connected to like peaceful forces, like like Desna, you know, or but really, or peaceful or well-intentioned forces like you know Desna or uh, Sukio, or it could be connected to like horrors from the dark Ooh, tapestry. Spooky. Something in the cosmos. What about Moonlight Bridge? Moonlight Bridge. Moonlight. Um, gets you, well, it lets you create a, it lets you create a bridge that, um, that you and your allies can cross normally, but everyone else can't. It Seems blocks, legit. it blocks all sorts of attacks, physical, ethereal, incorporeal. Yep. It doesn't matter. It's always kind of a horizontal plane that is like a bridge. So it's, it's not like a wall of force. Mm -hmm. It's, it's this way. You know what, you know what this reminds me of? What? This reminds me of that whole thing, that whole like debate about whether or not you could, uh, whether or not you could make an illusory bridge and then make like have all of your allies choose to fail you the same shadow, purpose, shadow, like shadow, shadow yeah, evocation, shadow evocation bridge, and choose to have all your allies fail, and then um, your enemies would start walking yeah, on it. Some of them would just start like falling that, through. Yeah, except for the except it actually for, works. It actually works. Yes. Uh, I mean, the other one does technically work because they don't know for sure that you cast the spell, but you would know that you cast it. Yes. 
Anyway. You just need to get air walk up at yourself and then pretend like you're anyway. Curse of the Skies <laughs> call makes yourself less substantial than you should be. So, first, you, you just have trouble interacting with things and become enfeebled one and take a penalty on grapple, shove, and other force movements uh, because it's just like, whoa, it's easy to push you away. Mm -hmm. uh, moderate curse, you're enfeebled two, and the penalty to those things against grapple, shove, force movement increases to minus three. And you're treated one size smaller for wind effects, so it's easy to just blow you away. And, but you get a bonus against trip attempts, and you only take half as much damage from falls. And in powerful leap and quick jump, because it's easy to jump around. And you only weigh half as much if someone needs to carry you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the major curse, you float above the ground, becoming enfeebled 4, and the penalty from the curse increases to minus 4 on grapple, shove, and force movement. But you can walk on liquids, and you get cloud jump. You don't leave tracks or like trigger weight-sensitive plates because you're not quite on the ground mm -hmm. at all. That's flames. A cool one. Flames. So it's completely fire. So your benefit is like fire. You just flicker and you are really good at reflex saves and you eventually gain uh, basically evasion, which other oracles do not. You're I trained in acrobatics. You get well produced flame. Fitting, yep, very yep. fitting. Candy. Fire and sun domain. Here's where sun actually is. Yes. That's sun. All right. Mm -hmm. What about incendiary aura? What does that do? It surrounds you with an aura of flame that causes creatures uh, within the emanation to catch on fire and take persistent fire damage. As long as they take fire damage in there. Yeah. What about whirling flames? It's a storm of whirling flame and two uh, two little five foot bursts that don't overlap and it engulfs them and deals fire damage. Yep. What about flaming fusillade? A giant. This is a giant barrage of flame that cuts like little tiny miniature fireballs that you that you hurl at everything. It's your produced flame as a single action yes. casting time, and you eventually gain a status bonus and just pew 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 out lots of flames. All right, but you get the curse of engulfing flames. Where you always see flames and smoke all the time. So, a minor curse is just, just smoke and heat and flames filling your vision. Anything outside of 30 feet from you is concealed. Uh, moderate curse. That still happens, but even more completely. And harmless flickers of obscuring flames fill your own space. So, you're concealed from other creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, they aren't cursed themselves, so they can use ways to get rid of the concealment, even though you can't. Uh, other creatures and objects are concealed from you, even if they're within 30 feet. But, but if you're using a fire spell, then forget concealment. Nobody's concealed from your flame with the fire spells within 30 feet. All your senses become imprecise beyond 30 feet because it's just everything is hidden past that. And with the major curse, the flames surrounding you are not just visions. They're actually fire in a 10-foot emanation. Everything takes 4d6 fire damage and you lose 1d6 hit points. If you have a weakness to fire, you increase the amount of hit points you lose by that weakness, but resistances and immunities do not apply. Mm -hmm. You directly lose the hit points. Do not... Uh, do not pass go. Do, do not, not collect $200. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you can suppress that aura if you want by spending an action to diminish the flames, and then neither you nor anyone in the aura take damage. And if you, while refocusing to reduce your curse, you're continually doing that so that you don't take... Um, hundred D6. Also, if, yeah, if you fall in, yeah, and if you fall unconscious, they also yes. subside. But that way you don't take 100 D6 damage while refocusing. Mm -hmm. Always good. All right, Life Oracle, Linda. Yes. Take it away. So, uh, Life Oracle is connected to the never-ending flow of positive energy. Your body is a deep reservoir of life energy. You get more hit points than normal, 10 plus con instead of 8 plus con. You're trained in medicine, and your cantrip is stabilized. Um, for the revelation spells, you gain um, life link, which allows you to uh, which allows you to provide some of your own life force to help heal your allies. Um, you gain um, you gain delay affliction, which I was not high enough level to have. Yes, you're not high enough level for these, but I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look those up. So it heals them immediately, and then it tries to counteract an affliction, but only actually delays them. It doesn't completely get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, what about life-giving form? 
transcend your physical form and becoming a beacon of healing energy. You gain resistance to persistent damage and weakness to negative damage, but your unarmed strikes deal positive damage. Um, you can touch living creatures to restore hit points. Um, and you can't heal yourself with it, but you can also... Um, Creatures that, uh, creatures that are harmed by positive damage, you can just keep striking up against them. Anytime they touch you or damage you with an unarmed attack or an unreached melee weapon, they just continually take positive damage. That makes so sense to you me. Don't, you don't, undead don't want to be up next to you with that. Uh, the Minor Curse... Uh, oh, death and healing are the related domain. Yes. Uh, the Minor Curse, um, it's harder for you to um, receive healing effects that restore hit points, take a status penalty equal to half your level. Uh, the moderate curse, you can't be healed by magical effects that originate from other creatures. Um, unless you're unconscious, then you can be restored to one hit point. Uh, but healing elixirs and potions and other items affect you normally, so you're going to want to have some of those on hand. Um, but when you cast heal and all your targets are living creatures, you heal d12s instead of d8s. That's handy. That has saved my life in the game where... Um... Where playing also, Lay -Lay when you finish casting non-cantrip spells, you, you restore hit points um, equal to the spell level to either um, to either the target of the spell or the ne creature nearest you. It can't be you, but you can restore more hit points to other folks. That's right. Often, uh, I found myself using this on healing spells and using it to restore more healing to the target of the spell. That's right. So, for example, uh, uh, Linda was would use the healing domain to put it on me mm -hmm. so that I would get additional healing. Hit points, yes. And then I got the additional healing from the from the healing domain spell, mm -hmm. and the additional healing from Linda rolling D12s, and the additional healing from her casting non-cantrip spells. Well, the GM just has it out for your summoner, so. Yeah, I know. Uh, but then... <laughs> you're usually the one that I'm When I healed myself, death. your healing domain spell would apply. When yes. you healed me, you were doing D12 plus the a bunch from the healing domain spell, plus... A bunch more from the fact that you cast a spell. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, very It's sometimes other people, but given the size of our party, like, more than half the time it's you. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. If we had just had a cleric who did not have some of the, that extra from the D12s and the extra from the add your level to it, mm -hmm. I would have gone down because we we saw that the difference between those two was enough. Yes. Multiple times. If she actually buff, had but... decent dex and con, she'd be a lot more powerful, but well, I want her to be an investigator, investigator multi-class. Multi so. uh, what about the major curse? You don't have that. <laughs> I don't yet. have that yet, yes. Um, but when you use a uh, when you use a spell class to cast a spell swap to cast, a fifth level or higher spell that takes two or more actions to cast, you can create a positive energy burst. You must, that does a... you must create one. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't know why you would ever not want to. But. Well, uh, you're about to find out. Let's see. Um, three action heal spell level four lower than that of the spell you cast. It occurs immediately after you finish casting the spell. You don't benefit from it, but you, oh yes, instead you lose double the hit points rolled for the heal spell. I see. I see why you wouldn't necessarily want. It does. It doubles the number of hit points rolled for the heal spell. Yes. Are lost by you. Yes, I see. Yes. I see. My low con oracle is gonna have some trouble with this. <laughs> but it heals everybody else for that about. Mm -hmm. uh. There we go. That's fitting. That's fitting. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, so, then we have the... Uh, the final two. The Loracle. Well, we both just said Loracle. Yeah, well, you always called your Loracle a Loracle. Well, he was a Loracle. He was a Loracle. He um, is a Loracle. A Loracle is a Loracle. And, and a snappy editor of treatises. Yes, that uh, is true. <laughs> he is a snappy editor of treatises. Oh, Lazarel. Featured in Secrets of Magic. Uh, uh, anyway. So, um, the mystery benefit is that you just have more spells in your repertoire. And the train skill, occultism, and one lore skill of your choice. Because, of course, you have lore. You're, You're a lore, lore oracle. oracle. Jinx again. <laughs> uh, you have read aura cantrip, uh, knowledge and truth domains. Your three revelation spells are brain drain, where you probe somebody's mind, dealing mental damage, and then using their stolen memories to attempt to recall knowledge check. Uh, except for using use their skill, skill modifier, modifier not, yes. not, not yours. Then you've got access lore. Where you can just sort of access any lore and temporarily gain uh, proficiency equal to your proficiency rank for Oracle spellcasting, which is a, a an extremely high amount. Yes. And 
for lore, the DCs are usually very low. Yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna know you need to do something with some ridiculously esoteric subject, and you're gonna be like, Whatever. I picked lore this exact subject. Ha, and ha, 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 you're ha, gonna ha, know ha. about what you need. To and do. then dread secret, where you 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 utter a secret up to, to six creatures that's so at odds with their fundamental nature that you choose a re resistance or weakness you believe that that one or more of them have, and if you are right. Then, even if they make their save, they take one damage of the type of the weakness you chose, thus triggering the weakness, or lose their resistance until the end of your next turn. And if you fail, if they fail their well save, they also become frightened and potentially very, very frightened out of critical failure. Yes. Like, oh no, you knew my weakness! You struck my weak point for massive damage. And your curse is the curse of torrential knowledge. There's just so much knowledge pouring through your head at all times, it's hard to pay attention to things, so you take a big initiative penalty. Yes, in the moderate curse, you take a minus four penalty to initiative as you're trying to process all the, all that information. The moderate curse, you're always flat-footed by it, but you also automatically make one knowledge check as a free action, uh, and you wind up kind of having an assurance-style situation with that knowledge check. And the major curse, you can understand all languages, but you can't speak. Because the information is just overwhelming your communication centers. Uh, if you cast a spell with a verbal component, you must succeed at a DC5 flat check where the spell is lost, and you get a plus four status bonus on saves against linguistic effects. So last, but certainly not least, because the iconic Korkai has this as his mystery, yes. is Tempest. Tempest, yes. You are the center of your own tiny storm. That's right. Um, you're... Your hair and clothing are blown about by gentle winds, you're slightly damp, and your touch often comes with a static shock. That is the curse of the perpetual storm. Yes. Uh, so you can see through wind and water and send electric charges through air and water. You never take perception penalties from wind, rain, fog, or other precipitation, or from looking through water or being underwater, and they don't cause anything to be concealed to you. Plus, when you deal physical damage with a non-cantrip air or water spell, you deal additional electricity damage. You get electric arc as your cantrip. Nature fitting. as your trained skill. Um, and your related domains are air and water. The revelation spells start off with Tempest Touch. Yes. Which gives you a, a churning mass of icy water that deals bludgeoning and uh, bludgeoning and cold damage and might slow down your target. And since it deals physical damage, you deal additional electricity damage. Yes. Thunderburst. Thunderburst is. I a bet this does electricity damage. It does bludgeoning, bludgeoning and sonic oh, damage. And I was totally it, wrong. And since it yeah. deals physical damage, you also deal electricity damage. <laughs> there uh, you go. It's a, not a lightning burst, it's a thunder burst. Right, right, fair enough. Shock fair of. That makes appeal sense. Appeal of thunder. That makes sense. And then Tempest Form. I bet this doesn't deal electricity damage. Okay. So this one does electricity damage. God damn it. <laughs> does it really? Yes. Look, it says it does electricity damage. So you turn Zero into three. <laughs> you turn into a fluid form uh, that can be either air, water, or mist. In the water form, you're you're electrically charged water that can deal electricity damage. You had to stop uh, that one, didn't you? And you have a swim speed. In a mist form, you're, it's like a it's like kind of turn a what is the name gaseous form. And the air form, you're sort of a invisible air and can do gust of wind. So uh, those are the three options. One of which deals electricity damage. Mm -hmm. So with the curse of the perpetual storm, like Linda said, you're always in a little storm. With the minor curse benefit, uh, honestly, the entire curse for the Tempest Oracle often leads to players who are like not very team focused and are kind of thinking about themselves to be like, oh, most of this stuff is not even a penalty. It's just mm -hmm. a bonus. The major curse doesn't do anything bad. Uh, because your minor curse is you've got this aura of winds around you that put out non-magical fires and electrical energy builds up, giving you a weakness to electricity. And you take the extra penalties from f that you normally take for having metal, even if you don't. A moderate curse, there's a 10-foot emanation of the minor curse's aura, and you take a minus two penalty... Um, or sorry, others take a minus, minus two, two penalty, penalty on range attacks. attacks using physical emanation against you. Your but they target you or originate from you, so yes, both. and so do yes. you. You both do. And your weakness to electricity increases to five or half your level, whichever is more. But you gain an equal amount of fire resistance. And the major curse, 
is now a 15 foot emanation the winds are so high that the area is difficult terrain for larger and smaller creatures on the ground and huger smaller flying creatures everyone you, but you everyone but you is affected by this and some people are like this is nothing it's only benefit and it's like mm -hmm. try being an ally of someone who has yes. this like the electricity arcing around you becomes <laughs> dangerous so anybody who touches you including with a touch spell or melee unarmed attack like they're trying to heal you yeah. with a one action heal for example, or use battle medicine. They take, then they have to like slog through the slog through slog an aura of uh, the flowing winds to go up to you. Their hair is just like, and then they touch you. I imagine like, the clearance is going to be like, forget it. You only get two action heals. And they touch you, and then it just shocks them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that is the curse of the perpetual storm. And those are the curses. So I think yes. that is the. the uh, but there are also feats. Yes. There aren't a huge number of feats, uh, but there are a good number of feats. So, uh, let's take a look at all the feats that are in the Advanced Player's Guide for Oracle. So, at first level, your choices are Glean Lore, where you kind of do a religion check to try to understand weird information from your mystery. and Thematic for the Lore Oracle, but not restricted to them. You can learn anything, but... It's basically a dubious knowledge, but one step worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so your critical success is correct. Your success is correct and incorrect. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have reach and widen spell beta magic, which are in a bunch of classes. We so it looks like critical before. success only gives you one piece of information, and that's how you know. Uh, that's how you know that you got it correct. Whereas any other result could be a success or a failure. Well, or a no, failure, failure you learn incorrect information or gain an erroneous or misleading clue. So oh, it could be a regular so a success failure. and a crit So failure and critical success look the same as do success and critical failure. Correct. So you get reach of one spell made <laughs> magic. Second level has cantrip expansion, which a lot of others have. Domain acumen, where you can gain an initial domain spell from uh, the other domain that you didn't pick before. Uh, and then Divine Aegis, where you, as a reaction, you're about to attempt a saving throw, and you can get a plus one circumstance bonus to save against non-divine magical effects until the beginning of your next turn, and a minus one against divine effects, because your curse makes you weaken to divine magic. You've got the Spell Weapon at 4th level, which we saw in the Wizard and, and Sorcerer. Gives you some extra damage uh, when you cast certain spells. Divine Access, which is a really cool one that I very, took on, very my, on, my, on, my, on my character. It lets you um, choose a deity who grants one of your mysteries granted domains, and then add cleric spells granted by that deity to your spell list. Yes. So, um, so I did that for mine cause she, because she sort of thematically came from a Blackened Hands oracle in 1st edition so that she would have fire spells. From Saren Ray. Ray. Yes. And now so you... she's a fire blasty healing oracle. My summoner and, there's a lot my of summoner and that, your yeah. oracle both have the spells heal and fireball. Yes. <laughs> so there's a lot of flexibility you can do with that to gain all sorts of spells you wouldn't normally have. That's right. So Vision of Weakness gives you the focus spell Vision of Weakness, which is you target a creature and you learn their weakness. And yes, and you gain a plus two status bonus to your next attack roll or skill check against that foe. And then they're temporarily immune after you find their weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's Advanced Revelation to gain the Advanced Revelation spell. Spiritual Sense, where you kind of notice spirits and haunts that are around. This is one of those, this is one of those even when you're not specifically saying, this is what I'm doing, the GM rolls a secret check to see if you notice a yep. particular thing. Yep, yep. Very useful. Uh, steady spellcasting, kind of in a lot of spellcasters. Uh, so there's debilitating dichotomy, which is a fun uh, spell that you can get at 8th level that you basically run the unchecked power of the conflicts between your mystery into you and the enemy, except for that you get basically an improved evasion style ability on it, and they do not. Then you get more focus points. Yeah, yeah. But it deals like a, a mm -hmm. fairly significant amount of damage to both of you. But if you just can just make your save, you won't take any of it. Uh, because you get a degree of success one better than you roll. So it's actually better than a pre-division because yes. even on a failure, you get a success. Uh, also, the target is stunned one. If it critically fails, it's saved. But you never will be. You won't be. Even if you critically fail, you're saved. Because mm -hmm. ah, you're used to this. You're like... <laughs> You're like, oh, I critically failed. Yeah, that tracks. That's kind of my life. And the target is like, this is so bad. How do you deal with this? I'm stunned. Stunned, I say. 
That's what they think, but they can't say it. You know why? They're stunned. Correct. <laughs> so they can't react. Um, so read Disaster, you spend 10 minutes to gain the effects of an augury, except for that um, it only tells you about bad things. So if you get wheel, you get says there's nothing. And if it's wheel and woe, it just says woe. Um, so it, it only tells you the bad part about what's going to happen. Yes. But you know what? Maybe that's if all you need. If it says nothing, then you should do it. Yeah, because it's either neutral, nothing's there, or it's good, right? Um, so, 10th level oracular warning, you're about to roll initiative, and you're just kind of like, you you have these visions, you shout out to warn your allies, it distracts you, and uh, one of your allies, or two, if you're legendary of religion, get to uh, gain a major benefit, where they roll twice, and use the better result for initiative, and you roll twice, and use the worst. Mm-hmm. Yay. Uh, it's hilarious, but it's very good if you have an ally you need to get first in battle. I mean, if you've already got a minus four in initiative, like, you're going to... Th- you're, if you're, you're the lore oracle, you already you're kind of like, know... You're like, I don't care, I'm gonna be like, I'm last no matter what, <laughs> so let's make the this really important character first. Yeah, for sure. Quick and casting, a really nice one to have, a lot of spellcasters have for that once a day wombo combo turn, uh, where you, you cast a spell for one fewer action. Surging Might... If your next action is to cast a spell, this meta magic lets you ignore an amount of resistances uh, equal to your level against uh, chaotic, evil, good, lawful, negative, and positive damage. So it can be particularly handy if they're resistant to two of those types of damage at the same yes. time. Domain fluency upgrades the uh, that ability to get domain spells from the from domains associated with your mystery to let you get the advanced domain spell, yep. make it a revelation spell, gets the curse bound trait. And as usual, for things that give you more uh, focus spells, you gain another point in your focus. That's right. Greater Revelation gives you your Greater Revelation. Magic Sense is one that's in... uh, Is there a limit to how big a focus pool can be? Three. (coughs) So, the moment you get one of these, it'll be (laughs) at three, and then it will stay there. But just for future-proofing, even when we kind of know you're already at three by the time you got to, like, some of these points... In case there's say. some other way for someone eventually to get yes. one of them. Yes, or like yeah. a class archetype that like takes away, or who knows. Yeah. Magic Sense, which is in several spellcasters, gives you a third level to type magic off. At all times, you're always sensing it. Uh, 14th level. For Stall Curse, you could spend an action. Once per day, once per be day. like, yeah, I know I'm about to do something that would normally increase my curse, but this time... Nah, won't. it's a meta magic where you just don't. Yep. Mysterious Repertoire is like your repertoire... It's just so weird that it has a spell that's not from the divine list. Uh, it's just just some random one, and you can switch it around. <laughs> Di- diverse mystery is like okay. I know I've got this advanced revelation from my own mystery, but somehow I have a revelation spell from another mystery. Why do I have, like, a bones spell with my fire oracle? I mean, it's a very diverse mystery, okay? It is it is literally a mystery why I have this. Yes. And there's a paragraph in there that's like, don't be a cheese weasel. If this would if this would otherwise negate something about your about your curse that you can't negate, then it doesn't work. And also, if it requires the other curse to make any sense, then you can't mm-hmm. do it either. Uh, portentious spell is one where basically... Uh, it's so distracting that it distracts enemies who are trying to use reactions against your spell. And not only that, uh, if it has a spell attack roll or a saving throw, creatures you hit or fell or saved are fascinated with you. Blaze of Revelation is just you go into this mode where you can just keep casting Revelation spells without spending anything. And then at the end of the minute, you roll a save and you may die. You probably won't. Mm-hmm. You'll probably be um, drained and unable to reduce the drain, but you may die. Yep. <laughs> Don't critically fail. Divine Effusion twice per day um, on different spell levels. When you run out of spell slots of the appropriate spell level, you can just cast it anyway. Where does that power come from? Again, it's a mystery. And at 20th level, you have that typical, hey, look, I've got a uh, another 10th level spell. Oracular Providence, yep. Yep, you've got Mystery Conduit, where you can cast a 5th level spell with no duration. Instead of spending a spell slot, you can just advance your curse instead. And then Paradoxical Mystery. Uh, every day during your daily preparations, you can choose a basic or advanced domain spell from any domain in the core rulebook or another domain that you have access to or any initial or advanced revelation spell for another mystery. Just... 
any of this stuff and you get it as a you get it as a there's like spell. dozens of options yes you're just like yeah that's the uh, that's the one i need today <laughs> whatever i i have i have all the mysteries so it's like does that does that even make sense why it's paradoxical mystery your 20th level nobody knows nobody knows okay so that's what we've got for the oracle itself let's talk about archetypes which we'll start with the oracle archetype so mm -hmm. the oracle multi-class archetype is a fairly standard uh multi-classing archetype in the sense that you're gonna get trained in the spell attack rolls and spell dcs and then you can type. get you need to have and, and the you start with yeah. trips. You and, need to have the ability score that's yep, associated 14. with the class at fourteen. And then yeah. it's gonna give you the ability to take first or second level feet, and then a feat of up to half your level after that. Mm -hmm. You'll get a basic spell casting at level four to give you first through third level spells eventually. You'll get um, advanced spell casting or expert spell casting at master at twelve and master at eighteen, plus breadth at eight to give you more of your lower level slots. That's what it has. But and it does get, have yes. one other feat that not everybody has first revelation, which uh, can actually give you your revelation spell, but it progresses your oracle curse. Normally, you do, for thematic reasons, get the mild effects, which are less than minor and don't do anything like the one Linda read off for Tempest, mm -hmm. where it's just like, there's a flurry of air around you. Yes. Has no mechanical effect, but it's cool. Um, but with first revelation, you always take... The minor curse from your mystery, but you take the moderate curse of just becoming flat-footed. Mm -hmm. Because those other moderate curses are complicated and sometimes are very heavily dependent on things that you don't even have. Yes. So that's what it does. And you gain the, uh, revel the, uh, the initial revelation spell from your mystery. And then, of course, you can use the feat um, that gives you a feat at half your level to get the advanced spe uh, revelation spell because that is a level six feet so at level 12 for example you could use it to get that one mm -hmm. so as usual for like these spell capping archetypes when we talk about like who they're good for generally characters who have that who for whatever other reason have that ability score who want yes. to expand their who want to expand their list especially if you are options. already good at that type of magic so clerics yes. often have 14 charisma for their divine font so they can easily take the Oracle dedication and it can be a handy way to have certain um, spells spontaneously available to you yes. that you might need at a variety of lower levels but not quite as high as your maximum level spells so that it can take some pressure off of the spells you actually prepare with your cleric spells, for example. Yes. Um, that uh, Champions who uh, have a charisma-based uh, divine spells also can do okay, although they, they honestly aren't like in that much better shape than just the progression that you would already get from this uh, but hey you know mm -hmm. what it works out sorcerers of any kind but especially divine sorcerers obviously can um can get some benefits i here. can see bards as well wanting to branch yeah. out their different spell wanting to branch out into different type of spell casting. yeah your proficiency won't be as good but it doesn't really matter and you're still using your charisma so there's mm -hmm. just there's really a lot of options for this when it comes to what dedication you also don't have to have been a spellcaster to start with you don't mm -hmm. like um what are some other like you can be a swashbuckler yeah or for example and do great with oracle so some of the dedications that work well with oracle are just basically oracle is too diverse to pick right because yes. if you're a battle oracle you might want like battle oracle of, of bows could take archer or battle oracle of big inquisitor dedication is not and is not a mechanically optimal choice. you could take mauler for <laughs> um for, uh, investigator you mean Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, that's it. You, I'm an investigator, yeah. Yeah, you could take Mauler for two-handed no on Battle Oracle. Sure. You could take, if you're a Life Oracle, you might, like, for example, take Medic or something to get even more healing with mm -hmm. Mundane Healing. Or uh, and, uh, one that's kind of thematically interesting is Blessed One, where, they like, a deity has just chosen to give you powers whether you wanted it or not, which kind of, it fits in somewhat with the Oracle. The Oracles are usually not specific to one deity, but maybe mm -hmm. like there's one deity who started it all. Um, also, if you're ta also if you have that feat about like having more things from a domain of a particular deity, then it might be yep, that it might yep. be more tied to a specific deity, but but caught in a storm of power nonetheless. That could absolutely work. Yes. So really, because of Oracle's diversity in uh, mysteries, you you kind of have to figure out what your mystery is first, and then decide what you're going to do when it comes to your your archetype. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, 
I mean, every every mystery is going to give you a different skill that you're Just trained in. Just definitely in not investigator, probably. <laughs> but Linda's character is very fascinating. But yep. um, uh, we're always scared that she's going to get taken down. <laughs> the GM is like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I want to do the story. Yeah. <laughs> she needs, like, every ability score except for strength. That's and true. she needs them a lot. So my strength is tainted into the ground, which means that I can't wear armor that's any good, and my dex isn't very good either. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and even your con, which is one of the key ability scores of it's Life like, Oracles, okay. is only like, okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we got to level five, though. That really helped It definitely you. did. It really definitely did. did. Yep. All right. So, yeah, that's it. Um, That's basically Oracle. It's a fascinating and very cool class. And um, let's see. I don't see any other additional comments or questions about Oracle in the chat. So, so let's say goodbye to YouTube. Let's say goodbye to YouTube. Join us next time for Swashbuckler. Mm -hmm. Bye, YouTube. Bye.